You ready to see that bevel? That's how I like my Moras. This is the Mora, I believe it's the Companion model. It's brand spanking new. It's a lovely knife. It's a good knife, but it's not fantastic yet. Not for me. Uh, the Companion model wasn't made to be a bushcraft model per se. I, I don't believe. The spine is rounded, so it has a, a nice rounded spine from factory to give it that cleaner look. The edge is not that sharp, which makes it not up to par for me. I want that sharpened spine for in the woods, so it can throw a spark off a ferro rod. And a way to test that, if you're looking at a knife in store, is to try to use the spine to shave your fingernail. If you can scrape shavings off your fingernail, it'll cast a spark no problem. Right now, this Mora won't at all. It just glides right over my fingernail. So we need to fix those two things before this is a fantastic knife for me to take it in the woods. Like I said, this is brand new. Hasn't been used yet. The sticker's still on it. So I'm going to take an $18 knife and make it perfect. Bring it up to its fullest potential for my uses in the woods. So for starters, because this is a Scandi grind, we're going to want a nice flat surface. I've talked about it before. You could use a nice single ceramic tile. I have this nice little surface here of a jointer table. It's a jointer for woodworking. And uh, this is a nice flat bench. It's just at the right height for me working. So I'm going to use this. But you can use any flat surface. I'm going to want to stick down some sandpaper. Now I'm going to recommend sandpaper for this because flattening, uh, flattening a Scandi groin that's not flattened takes a nice bit of work. It takes a while. You really have to remove some steel. So if you're a whetstone guy like me, I don't like putting my whetstones through that. Especially uh, when it's customers' knives and stuff. I might be a little bit more lenient when it's my own if I want it a certain way, but if you're constantly doing it for, like for other people too, it really wears away at your stones. So take some sandpaper, it's fairly cheap, disposable, and you can really work that hard and not worry about uh, hollowing out your whetstones or things like that. So I'm going to start with some sandpaper. Just going to stick it down. I've got a little bit of craft adhesive. It's just a, like a multi-purpose spray adhesive. I'm going to spray a little bit just to stick that sandpaper in place. I can clean it up after. It's worth the time to put it down for me because it uh, just keeps everything in place and I can work the sandpaper a lot harder without it shuffling around on me. Once that sticks, we'll have uh, just make sure you flatten it out nice and you'll have an excellent workstation. So just for your reference before we start working here, it's a brand new Mora. Okay, and that's been my experience pretty consistently with Moras. That's about how I get them from factory. Okay, so not definitely not sharp enough for me. So we have our surface here, our sandpaper stuck in place, which is fantastic. And to save on my stones, this is about, uh, I'd estimate around 80 grit paper, it just says medium, but it's about an 80 grit. So I'm just going to lay my knife, tip it on its Scandi groin, okay, so lay it on its side, and then flip it up so the Scandi touches. And then you can give a few pushes. And then let's have a look and see what's happening here. So I'm putting a little bit too much pressure on the actual edge right now. I'm going to lighten up a little bit. Shouldn't take long to remove that steel with this heavy paper. Let's have a look here because remember it's a coarse sandpaper and we're going to be cutting real fast. It's doing well. You see those nice strokes now. I love that look. Almost a satin finish. 
and I'll keep working on one side just for your reference I'll keep working on one side until I completely remove that micro bevel there's no point in switching back and forth at this point you have to get that far at minimum on this side so I'll just stay on this side and work it until I get that micro bevel out of there so I've just finished up on that real coarse paper you can see those nice striations run right to the edge they're fairly deep but I'll, I'll do a few more real light strokes into the edge I have a nice burr along there now you can't really pick it up well on the camera but I'll just lightly pull that off just by drawing my edge lightly through a piece of wood and or cross grain like that just the weight of the knife and I'll help pull off that burr now what we'll do while I still have the real coarse paper set up we'll work on that spine you can even see the rounding as you see the light tapering to the spine see the watch the light here see the light rolls in over to show that rounded edge so I'll show you how to take care of that now with the coarse paper this part is actually super simple plant your knife try to keep it as square as you can so looking down on the edge helps you keep the edge nice and straight to the, to the sky and just work your knife this way I find it's easiest to remove steel the fastest just keep an eye on uh, your spine you don't want to remove never want to remove more steel than you have to try to keep your angle nice and rigid any rolling like this just works to uh, just it's going to take you longer to get that nice square edge keep working your spine until you have a nice nice sharp edge okay so I've worked that spine you can see those nice scratch marks there and I've got a pretty square corner I've checked it with uh, with the, the fingernail test and let's see if I can show you here get in focus see how that's shaving look at that so easily just barely touching it just shaves away my fingernail so I know that'll scrape a ferro rod very nicely I will take it up one more grit the next grit I do I will uh, just take out some of these striations a little bit but I never polish my spine like I do with my bevel even though it's fairly square the more you tamper with it after you get this the more you'll start to smooth those corners so after you've gotten that nice uh, nice shaving edge like a fingernail shaving edge don't tamper with it much you could leave it like this no problem uh, it would probably be most effective actually if you just left it nice and coarse like this definitely doesn't look bad but I will take it up one more grit just to refine it a little bit more just be careful you keep that square angle I'm going to do a few more strokes into that edge just to lighten up the scratch pattern a little bit and then we'll switch grits so we've got some 100 grit paper here now this is pretty crappy 100 grit paper about the worst I've had but it'll do fine for this because we're not going to spend too long on it but we are just going to do the same technique the exact same thing and just start to remove those coarse scratch marks of the paper we started with you can see you could probably hear that this paper sounds totally different than the last stuff you don't hear that real heavy grinding the gouging into the knife which is a nice feeling okay so I'm just about finished up here with the 100 my last strokes are going to be just into the edge just a few strokes on each side I'll do four on each side and three and two and maybe a few ones or something like that keeping consistent on that angle and decreasing pressure and I find this helps me just pull away that burr especially if I switch back, back and forth a few times because if I do it a few times on one side it seems like sometimes it rolls the burr in under and then when I switch over 
and it just helps grab it further and just pull it off there. Okay, so I figure Mora's big thing is providing value to their customer. And uh, I was going to move up after that 100 grit paper, I was going to move up to my nice big fancy whetstones. But in, uh, in the light of keeping with value, let's keep going with sandpaper. I'm, not, I'm just going to finish this knife with just sandpaper and then maybe some strapping at the end. I finished that spine on the, uh, on the 100 grit paper, which now it shaves shaves the fingernail no problem. So this is some 400 grit paper. I do have a real nice Nanoa 400 grit stone but I'm not going to use it. It's a 400 grit paper which is my last piece by the way. I'm just going to work it on the 400 straight from the 100. I find this is an easy jump to make especially if you have some good 400 grit paper you can go from one to four real nicely and it doesn't you don't have to spend too much time on the 400 grit paper so already I can see a huge difference in the scratch pattern the 400 is where you really start to get a nice looking bevel really nice looking bevel so remember just stay on that grind not too much pressure Keep that angle nice and flat. Just work it until it looks pretty. Work it until you've got a nice uniform pattern right to the edge is mainly what you're looking for here. So I've got some nice clean scratch patterns here of a 400 grit now. And I just drawed my edge slightly through a piece of wood, a piece of soft wood just to help clean up the burr a little bit. And now I'm going to finish off with a few light strokes going into the edge. Notice I'm not going back and forth to pull another burr off there. Just strokes into the edge to create a nice solid edge. Just sitting nice and flat on that on that Scandi bevel. Not trying to create my own angle here. I tell you, my sandpaper stock is getting really low. I just mustered up some uh, some scrap pieces of 2000 grit. It's getting pretty bad here. I'm going to have to pick up some new stuff. I go through a lot of sandpaper. Ah, and then that happens. A little too much pressure. I'll try to keep it a little lighter and just work it. I'll just work around it and try to remove some of those 400 striations. So now I've worked that paper long enough. You can see I've got a nice polish, a little bit more hazy up around here but not a big deal. Now that I've worked it long enough I'll give this knife a few strokes into the edge. By the time you get up to this grid of paper if you play your cards right like I've showed you on this video you shouldn't really have any burr if you like you can just take a take a piece of wood just to be sure and just give it a few just watch my hand here I'm just I'm not putting any weight on the knife I'm actually lifting off some weight of the knife drawing it through a piece of wood just to make sure there's no burr whatsoever and then just a few light strokes, not increasing the angle at all. It's just sitting right flat on that Scandi. A few light strokes right through, just to, to give that edge one last tidy up there. Okay, so just to finish off this project nicely, I'm going to use, this is my uh, rough leather strap. So it's, a, it's the back of a piece of leather, the unfinished side. Just throw a little bit of compound in there. It's mounted to a block of wood, so it keeps it from rolling much or convexing the edge. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strap it the same way I would sharpen it, and that's 
to keep that bevel nice and flat on the leather. Not going to do a lot of stropping here, just a little bit. Remember, keep it nice and flat. Don't increase it. Don't put a big convex on your edge. That'll uh, that'll get rid of some of the work you just spend a lot of time on. Okay, that's enough strapping there. I'll clean up that flat surface a little bit just by just laying it completely flat. I'm going to strap here, just cleaning up the flat surface. Just a few draw strokes because the uh, the factory grind is in this direction on the flat surface here. So I'll just do a few strokes in that direction. And now I'll do the other side. Stay with that grind. A fresh, com freshly compounded strap with some good paste can remove more steel than you think. You can feel this strap here now, just kind of biting into the knife, grabbing onto the knife. Okay, a few strokes with the grain of the flat, and I am applying a bit of pressure there. Does a nice little job of cleaning it up. So what I'm going to do now, just to finish it off, is maybe two on each side, a light stroke with just a slight increase in angle, using a little bit of pressure, do one more, just to increase that edge, just to make it ever so slightly more thick, I'll wipe off my compound, any any bit of a sticky compound on there so it doesn't dirty my other strap. Now I'm going to go over to my finished face strap. This is just a piece of like polished finished leather. And I'm just going to increase my angle more than the flat Scandi because this one doesn't really remove any steel. Increase my bevel a little bit, a few strokes. this knife is done. So our $18 Mora Companion, lovely little knife, is now perfect for my needs. Ready to see that bevel? Just look at that. And I did nothing but what you saw in the video. I worked up to a 2000 grit paper I did, uh, let's see, I started off with approximately 60 to 80 grit paper, coarse paper. From there I went to 100 for a few minutes, to 400, to 2000. And then, the bit of stropping that you just saw. And just look at that bevel. And maybe you don't like a mirror polish, but it's sharp. And that's what we were going for here. Let's just get a good focus. Now we've got some paper here. Now you can Now that is a sharp knife. That's how I like my Morris. I mean That's so fun. I could just sit and do it all day. If you've never experienced a knife that sharp before, it is something amazing, I tell you. Still curved. Right? That's something special, that is. It'll treetop the hairs on the top of your head. Let's see if we can get a little hair clippage there. Okay. I won't do too much because I don't want bald arms again. I don't know if you can see that or not. But that knife is viciously sharp. If you touch it now, it's just got that feeling that, like you just barely want to touch it. It's so sharp. Put it back in its sheath. It's ready to go in the woods with me.
you guys you can easily do this process yourself just follow the instructions I showed and like I said with very little money I used maybe ten dollars worth of sandpaper in this video and for ten bucks worth of paper you get a bunch more paper than I just used and uh, you get pack a few packs of them right it'll do a lot of work if you like this video hit the like button subscribe to my channel I know this video might bring in a lot of viewers because I know everybody likes a good Mora. Leave me a comment down below. See you in the next video.